Can you just do June, July, and August? Or maybe September? Mm -hmm. Probably He does four. it earlier. He, he starts in... Uh, he starts in May? Yeah, about the first of June. Okay. So June, July, August. Okay. So and then does it do some September? Freeze my head. We're axing our way through. Can we get started? Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Nice and uh, any changes to the agenda or anything like that? Anybody? Um, if, if there's no public input, would you address updating mine at this point rather than having me go home and pee an arrow and come back? <laughs> I just have two minutes. Wait, <laughs> living off to Janari and up, wait. Yeah. Oh, can I? That's where I am. Recording in progress. I have two ads. Another one. Add. Okay. Uh, one is the uh, regional planning reps are due for reappointment every June, so they have two people that want to continue. And then the plumbing at the building we need to talk about it. Yeah. Not here. This location. Yeah. The plumbing where? Here. Oh, here. That's all I have. Okay. And I'd say yes, we can. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I'm on the wrong agenda. So, um, so the update is, is that uh, I finally got uh, in touch with Mark, and Mark uh, said he went over and talked talk to you about uh, uh, what was good, and um, he took some measurements. Just a minute. That's okay. Yeah, and there you go. <laughs> he took some measurements. <laughs> no, I thought they had a little, little crumbled up sticky note here. Trying to be proficient in my endeavors. And uh, anyways, um, he was saying something about the measurements, uh, uh, 19 feet uh, width. width, yes. Mm -hmm. And then it narrowed, uh, yes, and it was 12 feet. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that was it. And he got um, one quote, and it was for $2,500, and that's from Hutchins. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what I'd like to do is, um, uh, or what we should do, I should say, is that uh, um, we'll look at some, get a couple more bids to come into the town to do that anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the only thing that, with the discussion before, mm -hmm. it's what Ryan said, and I should have done it, actually, fine, but what we didn't take into consideration is the raising of the road as much as it was raised, the apron would have made no difference. You still had to. Feeling the difference. Yeah. So I mean that's it was it was moot really. Yeah. Think that the apron difference. Yeah. Yeah. And and they have to bank it that way because all the drainage is on the other side of the road instead of crowding the road and how we can't the water on it to my driveway and wipe it. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna to have to think about digging up the road and lowering something next time. All right, yeah, we're, already, was, we're already talked about. Yeah, I mean, if you can see where the walkway is when we moved in, yeah, where it is now. I mean, we're yeah, we're in the downhill side. Yeah, so we're there. So I'm hoping that okay. um, we can get. Uh, I was thinking about uh, Slayton and a couple others, and I'm going to see if Mark can okay. get them to give us a couple more prices. Appreciate it. And uh, then we can go from there. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you're okay. welcome. I don't want to speak here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening. Think of it. My mood is not excellent. This is okay. Okay. Shut. See that? Yeah. <laughs> Mary. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. No. You in the mood to hear about not me? We are now. <laughs> um, okay, so just um, a short update. Um, th does anybody have any questions about what we're doing, or are you all? Looks like you've been busy. I Thank see you. signs all over. I feel not like enough. not enough signs. I feel like every time I drive on a different road, I'm like, oh, there's another you must sign. Live on my my journey or something. Probably. Yes. I live on Center yes. Road, yes. so. <laughs> I notice it a lot more now. I do. I mean, maybe that's why, Matt. Maybe because I know about it, so I know what the signs are. Yeah. So I do yeah. notice it. I, I notice it on yourself be. now, too, even, like everywhere. I know. Like, it's oh. depressing. Yeah. But good. Actually, that's one of the things that I wanted to, to 
say because I don't know if you saw the article in the paper. That they, yeah, and and it was good because it was good um, coverage, but it was also a bit of a downer, I thought. And Aaron said, you know, he interviewed other people and he had to put in the other side of the story, which is stole people and, you know, people who have lots of not weed. And so it seems sort of hopeless, which is why I, I wrote a little letter to the editor to bring it sort of back up on a <laughs> positive spin. Um, and actually, I just did, I, I don't know if you saw that letter, but it's about this idea of, people seeing knotweed when it's first there, you know, like the single plant. And this has happened to me like five times this summer that center road, you know, there was um, actually nothing on the right hand side except for the one patch at the culvert. Well, there were a couple of, there's the Clark Road thing, but no real big patches of knotweed. And then I saw this single plant just pop up out of the grass. I don't know when it happened, but you know, so go dig that up, take the roots up to, to gamble, to dry, and the stalk is not a problem, it can just go in a drying stack anywhere. And then you mark it with a little yogurt lid sign, and so now we know that there was a bit of root there, and if it grows back, we just keep an eye on it, but that's done, you know? That's essentially a knotweed effort thwarted, and I just really love this idea. And so um, I just, it makes me still feel quite positive that there's, you know, stuff that we can do, especially on their roads where there really, you know, isn't much of a, a an infestation of knotweed, and, and we just have to work to keep it that way. So the only issue is getting more people motivated to see that, to do something about it, and, you know, we'll just keep working on that. But the cool thing was that Mark called me the other day and said, hey, I don't know if you care about this, but there's a single plant of knotweed up the north end of Garfield Road. Uh, almost at the craft spray line. So Tina or Rich or one of the Pearsons drove up there, dug it up, took, took it to Gamble, and um, well, I put the yogurt sign there because I had the supply of, of the stickers. But again, you know, that's uh, a thing thwarted, and which was great because Mark is the guy traveling the roads all the time, so he'll mm -hmm. be the one who, you know, I see it on my roads, but. Um, yeah, I was really heartened by that. I thought it was great. So, um, when you say take it to Gamble, gamble what, what does that mean? Well, the Gamble property is where we have, um, is we, the town owns this property uh, in North Hyde Park Village, and we have a management plan for transporting knotweed, which we couldn't transport it without this management plan. And obviously, this is not an effort that is really scaled it's really small fry stuff but it means that we have a place to take the roots the stalk isn't the problem it dries quite quickly there are any number of we have a little drying stack at gamble so we can toss it in there it dries it's where do you take the roots if you dig it up because they last a long time and, and they need to dry somewhere so i have a bunch of pallets set up and then we just take the roots up there and they just sit in the sun and fry and what we do with them next is unclear I, you know you can easily burn them i want to figure out something useful to do with them you know burn them i just don't have time to think about it but there's something called biochar i thought it'd be cool to burn the, the roots and turn it into fertile material but it's not a problem because we're not out of capacity for drying roots right uh, so that's what that means and the only and, it's a it's it's a small scale thing because it's just a handful of us who are part of this group and it's a handful of us who are digging that out and keeping it up there it, it's not set up for an army of uh 50 not we digger things but we, we get there and then we have a problem of where to take the roots um so that's a good thing i'm quite excited about that there's there are some other good things happening, the plantation road patch of knotweed that um, has just been sitting there unattended to. We've got in touch with the owner, he's going to help, we're digging that, we're going to cut that and, and put a rubber roofing down to smother that. And I just got a call from another rubber roofing contact guy, he's got a supply coming off a roof on Thursday, so I get to go get my supplies up because I'm running out of, of smothering. And so, he's donating that to you, or just uh, I think so. Yeah, oh, I mean, awesome. we've, I've I've paid for some yeah. tips for some, oh. and had some for free. Oh, great! Well, oh. actually, if it's for free, I 
Right. The guy who helps me load it up, it's heavy. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, so um, that's good. And uh, yeah, so the only other thing that I'd like to just put out there and raise as something for you to think about, I'm not asking anything specific now, but um, you have, you, we, the town, have uh, not weed on the side of the, the parking lot here. Last year they looked like two patches that weren't very big. This year they look like more. Um, is it a big deal that it's there? I don't know, probably not. I mean, it's a very steep gully, I suppose, in a, a water event. I really don't know much about what goes on in that gully, but it seems like it would be better as a sort of badge of, I don't know, caring about not, we, not to have it there, but that's really not the point of the ask. It's a very steep thing, and so it's not a good place. I don't want to hang out on that slope, cutting knotweed and refilling it every couple of weeks. So it's a really, I think, a good site to try something, but even if it isn't the right site or the right patch or you don't care about that knotweed, I still want you to think about the idea of, of entertaining an experiment to do an injection method of herbicide at a small to medium-sized patch of knotweed. So I don't know if you're familiar with it, you, I won't get into the detail of it, but as opposed to the foliar spray method of herbicide, which the protocol for knotweed is that they cut it right around now, mid-July, early July, and then let it regrow to, you know, September time, and then do a foliar spray of the much shorter um, uh, plant, and it hasn't flowered because it's shorter and it's been cut. The other method that's more, well, very direct is you inject into the stalk. So it has to be a mature stalk, a mature stand of knotweed. And there are places around in other counties and states where they have very active knotweed management programs where, for example, a town or a county has the injection equipment. It's specifically designed for this and you know they warmed it out to people and i'm not proposing that here i'm just saying it's it's done it's something that people do and it's quite interesting and i know somebody in town who's planning to treat his his not weed um that way later in the summer he's thinking of buying the equipment to, and doing that and i think it would be a good thing to experiment with to try and to see how you do it, whether it works, whether it gets rid of the, 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 well, it does kill the root, whether it, yeah, does it in one single season, whereas you might have to go back a second time if it's right. I don't know, but anyway, I quite like to experiment with that. And so, and I realize that, that that's a, um, you know, something new and something that you need to be involved in because it's the use of herbicide in this case it would be on town property but i'm sure we could find somebody else's property who they want to try it if you guys didn't want to um the other place you could try it is in one of the right-of-way patches but then we're back in with the town and you know mark would have to be involved in that and um yeah I was going to say something else, but I forgot. <laughs> anyway, so... Do you have a name of the herbicide? Well, the herbicide that is the operative herbicide for uh, knotweed is mainly glyphosate. Yeah. And glyphosate is what gets mixed with uh, other things. If you're using a foliar spray, it has to be mixed with surfactants and adjuvants and things to make it behave properly in the air and to um, adhere to the plant in a way. So uh, in the injection method, I'm not really sure about this because I, I think you would be injecting a much more concentrated bit of glyphosate. And, oh, I know what I was going to say. You, you need to do, to do this as an experiment. We need to have a licensed herbicide is the only way you can lawfully do herbicide that's not on your own property is with a license. Yeah. So I need to find somebody who's willing to do the injection method because they don't 
that's not a routine thing for licensed applicators to do because it's not very efficient. They, you know, they don't want to inject. It's volunteers who inject uh, every individual stock, not you. So that is something that I'm interested in and would like you to think about. And, and I need some guidance from you about, well, I guess I could make a formal proposal about it. Um, but if you know that you don't want to do that, then I won't waste my time. You have to put a notification out, correct? To do any, any type of spray like that, I think you have to notify anyone with that. Well, I'm not talking about spraying, I'm talking about injection. an injection. It's just a on town injection. Property. Um, but yeah, I mean. Yeah. So it would be different than this spray type. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So you just do it yeah, exactly right going. into the, <laughs> into the yeah, stock. It's, it's actually pretty cool. I can send you a video of, of, of I think it's the instruction video um, for, I think it's King County. They, in, I think that's Washington State. They have a massive program where they have really good material online, that's for sure. And they do a demonstration of how you, because I think they have a lending program. Um, so this is an instructional video to the homeowner who's borrowed this thing, and it's quite interesting. But anyway, if you um, you have a specific dose that you put in, and you just go, oh. <laughs> interesting, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so so there is that, and then you know the herbicide thing gets a bit more complicated because I know people have different views about it, and it's going to come up again, I think. In, in, the, in the context of, you know, people wanting to use it in the town right of way, and it, it, may, it, it seems appropriate that we should have some kind of policy about that. Uh, yeah. So the person that uh, will be applying the herbicide, if we could have maybe a talk with that person to gain their insight uh, as far as toxicity and stuff like that. Just in quick looking up, it says it has a, the chemical has, has lower acute toxicity to humans than 94% of all herbicides. So um, uh, it is obviously less toxic, but it uh, doesn't say how it affects uh, uh, people or anybody might come into contact with it or whatever, but you said it was injected. I've watched some of those videos because I've got it on my property and, uh, um, and thought about doing that. And so uh, but I think the big concern is, is how will it impact the environment and, and people, that type of thing. The animals. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Well, I've been trying to educate myself because I'm interested in the topic because I, uh, I have all the same concerns that you do and um, it's, it's a question of how one gets the, the information that you want because it's quite a big population of, for example, I've been in, in correspondence with a professor in Maine who's done quite a lot of work and um, and I've also talked to the, the Department of Ag person who is our, uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into the detail of it here because it's a big topic and I know you have a lot of work to do. I guess I just wanted to flag with you that if you're working in knotweed, eventually you need to decide what you're going to have in your toolkit. And I'm open personally to the idea because you know, you're, you're using a whole bunch of stuff. And if you're taking one thing, which we've never used off the thing, then you need to know that and you want to do that for good reason. Part of the reason that I'm open to it is exploring whether we can get comfortable is just quickly, the, um, this, the stuff that you use is out there and it's lawful, right? Any homeowner can go buy it and, and use it. That doesn't, and plenty of people do and use it to excess probably, but so, but the other thing is that 
whether we exist or do anything about not we we have a not weed management problem, whether or not in Hyde Park exists or not. I mean, Mark's been managing not weed for several years, you know, because it's there and he's had to do things with it. So if you could take this patch of not weed, say, on this road and get rid of it in a year, then you will not have not weed spreading from ditch digging, culvert. Uh, repair, uh, uh, what do you call that when you scrape the road? Road grading, um, snow plowing, well, probably the, I don't know if snow plowing does it, mowing, which is uh, an issue you, you raise. So is that a, a trade-off if, if, if it's lawful and safe and not harming the environment, is that a good trade-off to stop that thing from happening? It's a question. And you think it'd be less labor intensive? Totally. Oh my God. Yeah. Because, you know, in, in, in that's why, and, and I, I'm not looking for the easy path. I am totally committed to this mechanical control stuff. I, I, I'm, I love it and I think it's appropriate, but there are places where it's, it's just not doable. That's an example of you know, yes. steep grades, steep dangerous Super potentially right. right yeah yeah and um or too big big area yeah big area where you know you just can't go back and pull it every week and it's not mowable if it was right. flat and it was a big area and it was mowable then then a, that's a, a better tool say or preferred tool um so it's 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 a big topic i know you've got stuff to do and i that's enough for now i'm just telling you that it's it's on my mind and it, it becomes a part of any discussion if you're really trying to seriously manage a not weak problem as opposed to just poke fun at it that's... yeah okay so if you if you do find out some more or somebody would be willing to discuss uh, you know environmental aspects and that type of thing we'd be interested in here. So, well, what would be the way to do that? Because I mean, I can. I, if, are you thinking that I, I get a, a lecture organized and people? No, no. What, 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 I, what I was thinking is that uh, you would mention the name that uh, of somebody that you know, or somebody's going to use it, or somebody's going to come in and 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 what if you like eliminate or something like that? You mean the company? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. They, they probably do. I, that's probably not where I would go because they're a licensed applicator, but they do lots of stuff like mice and things. I, I, I don't think they're not weak people. Um, there are people out there who do this professionally, no question, specifically with invasive plants. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't know if I, you knew anybody. That, that does do it professionally and uh, would be willing to come in and and uh, inform us about uh, yeah so you just mean at a select board meeting have yeah. a presentation or something yeah yeah let me think about how to do that and whether that would be um yeah get you like a couple of steps in between before that sure something. there's another another place right on the um, centerville road you see that land the, the on the village side the town owns that land there it's terrible where <laughs> the village has a real problem with that the road right there there's, by parks it's, it's oh yeah, yeah 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 yes that is yes that, that, <laughs> on the right hand side is all town property oh wait, is, is it, it town, property town property or property. village or is it the same thing i think it belongs to town the town or the village where you at right by lvb on the bottom of centerville yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Right it's a village that is a village. That is village. Yeah. yeah. I know that the town. We have the dump dumps, site there. Yeah, that's we always don't snow there. Yeah. Um, just it's, there's yeah, it's then, massive there. Yeah. Yeah, and the, somebody has written to me about the giant knotweed that's coming up over the bank of the cemetery in the village as well. But I mean, uh, the village has you know a number of knotweed problems that are bigger. If, if, yeah, if, going down Maple Street there. Um, Potter. Well, and Beth was, she should have stayed for this because she was complaining about not weed last week or at the last meeting. Yeah. And I brought you up and she didn't know. 
that you were doing this. I'm sorry, who is that? Yeah, Beth Bailey, Beth and she lives Bailey. in a village. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I, and I thought so. It must be she has some on her property. Well, apparently, I saw maybe. somebody. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, yeah. it grew mm -hmm. up on the neighbors up there above my place. Remember you were up looking yeah. at it? We pulled yeah. it up. I took it up back and they cut all that out back. Yeah. And then she come back Sunday. Yeah. I noticed she was back Sunday and pulling it up. And pulling whatever up. didn't get yeah. done. Yeah, but that, that stuff pulls hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pulls hard, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it does, and sometimes like over at the ball field. You know, yeah. that or I'm weak in my old age. <laughs> Well, especially yeah, if it's in that yeah. stone. Okay, it wasn't stone. Maybe threw back. I mean, it was that high when she picked it. Sunday. Well, you made it angry, right? That's it's really right. Because it was hanging on. I didn't want to yeah. get it. It says, I'm not having these messages. It's a hearty plan. I would yeah, yeah, try to eat sure. some. <laughs> <laughs> See what it did. Um, anyway, so the only other thing I want, sorry. Yeah, we were going to talk about the gateway. Yeah, yeah. so the only th the only other thing I wanted to raise is, is and it really is, not my affair, it's just that I happen to spend time up in the village at the Gamble property, and so I talked to Ron about what we can do there and can't do there. And a couple of issues have come up and said to me that, you know, we don't have a survey, and so we don't know if it's in the floodplain, and yada, yada. And then, of course, I know all the great work that the guy on Valley Hall Committee has done, and that they're now, you know, kind of branding and signage and trying to slow traffic, and there's all this planning work that's gone on. And then Ron pops up the other day with, um, and, and of course, when you're at this site of Gamble, it's infested with knotweed, and the neighboring property is as well. And so it's been left to, go a little bit. And so then Ron pointed out this massive and wonderful funding opportunity that um, that just feels like the stars are aligning to sort of do something really important that isn't planning related, but that's actually doing something in the village. And I just wanted to um, kind of enthusiastically uh, praise Ron for finding this uh, funding opportunity and make sure it gets before you guys to see if it's something you want to do because I think it sounds, you know, really a powerful thing for the village if something as big as that could be um, done with not local taxpayer money. Over to you, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll start with a survey question because the state of Vermont said, don't mess with our right of way there. So their right of way extends into the gamble piece just a little bit. And we were, we were going to do a nice cleanup really of that yard. I'm, I'm still pursuing that with them unless you tell me I can't. No, it, it really <laughs> so, is the, the wrong, they've come up with the wrong answer. And I just want to point out, sorry, just to interrupt. It, it, <laughs> it's a not weed question. And because there's nobody at the state level who really cares about not weed, really owns the problem of not weed. It just, you know, like, and so happened? the answer came back, you can't touch our right of way, which is the standard thing. But if they cared about not weed, they might have gone a layer down and said, okay, yeah, that actually makes sense in the context. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. So, so that issue of what did we do with the town property came up with a, well, I guess we need state approval for the right of way. We know there's mapped flood zone that goes through the property, DeMar property and the corner property, which we call the church property, but it's yeah. been bought by somebody in Burlington. And they wanted to renovate that house on the corner, right near the, sort of on yeah. the guardrail almost, where the guardrail starts, it's right on the road. Um, not Demar's house, but the one that's other, yeah. you know, oh, okay. just, the, just, it's right on the edge road. Anyway, it's mapped in the flood zone, so he had to go through the flood rules, and you can't improve a property that's more than 50% in value without going through the flood hazard bylaw and all that stuff. So he stopped what he was doing. And he, need, he has a flood issue there. Larry DeMar is in the flood, plus he's a brownfield candidate. And then we have the survey and the questioning about what we actually do own from the Gamble property. So there's a whole bunch of technical questions there that really would stop anything from happening. So when, what's his name? Sorry, I can't remember, but he called from Vermont Emergency Management uh, on your other agenda item for the local emergency management plan. And as he's hanging up, he's like, and by the way, if you guys have any projects for uh, flood mediation, 
you should be putting those in because we have a bunch of money coming. It's like everybody has this pot of money that they need yes. projects for. Yeah. Which it's would one time be, money. Which, so and he right. specifically mentioned buyouts, which some a lot of places are doing buyout from flood zones. Oh. And he, you know, if you can come together with a project on that, then we have the ARPA money, which we can put into recreation to reclaim it to some other use. Because you all need to layer all this money on top of each other. But none of it is, um, at least that I've seen so far, it's like direct local taxpayer money. It's these other grant programs that you have to kind of manage and piece together. But it also ties in with the 2016 uh, village study that had a path from the post office to the gas station in Johnson. It, it ties into a stormwater study that Agency of Natural Resources did because they have a problem with stormwater on the inside curve at 100 C. Uh, VTrans wants to reconfigure that intersection so it has like some kind of uh, narrowing up because it, it, the traffic accidents are just high enough there. They want to narrow that up, which would be part of a streetscape project, not directly town, but something that VTrans would do. Uh, plus the July 17 study that's going on on uh, the Guyan Valley Hall. We're going to do some test crosswalks. I didn't set the date for the 17th of July. Just like Mary said, there's just so many things that are moving forward that so either the select board would say, let's finish some other things and then try something next year. But that gap of this, the money stuff is going to be passing too. You know, that's not going to be an every year thing. Usually brownfield money is really competitive and there was only so much money each year. Then you have to wait till the next year for more money. On the flood FEMA stuff, uh, that is unusual to have like state officials calling you for projects. Yeah. Usually you're in a waiting queue for years yeah. and waiting for it to get to a certain yeah. spot. So yeah, that's a, that was the end of our conversation. And we just wanted, Mary and I were like, I think the, the board really hasn't seen the gateway idea, but it's all these little pieces that were kind of scattered around different. But if you brought them together with something, then it might be funded and doable, but it would need some energy too. You know, you can't. So without any real energy, then we said, well, the board would have the energy because you'll have to sign off on everything and everything down the road. But I don't know what it exactly looked like, but it would need a, it would need a dedicated person to navigate all of those little grants and pull them together. Yeah, the, I mean, I, I spoke to Liz about it and um, well, you would know this anyway, they're, they're flat out as a committee. They've got enough and um, they'd never be able to take this on and I'm probably not with you anyway. Anybody else that we could put on like but, front porch form or anything like that to look for somebody? Who, she, Liz has a um, North Hyde Park email list oh. and a business yeah. list. Yeah. She has two lists, that she, one for just businesses and then she has one for their mailing list when they do events. Oh. So if there was a subcommittee of some North Hyde Park people that wanted to see something done, then they could be the energy, the local energy for that. Yeah. And then we'd have to tie them together with these other states. Maybe most active, but you need somebody skilled at really getting, I mean, it's, I guess, I don't know, Ron has time, somebody can write it. I can safely say Ron doesn't have any time. Right, I mean, somebody <laughs> yes. skilled to put together, a because there's a ton of planning material out there. There's the visioning thing, document that's been done. And no, the, yeah. Who's the lady that used to work with us that used to do really good with grants? Work with us. She's on the select board? Ken, Ken will tell me. Ken needs to use her all the time. Ophelia? Mm -hmm. Is on the select board? It's uh... Stephanie? No, I think we're going to do it. Oh. I'll make your name. Who was the younger? She's not there. Right, she went to the Army or something, right? Or Peace Corps? Yeah, the, she did the, the Giant Valley Hall Committee did have somebody, uh, I forgot her name, but then she got too yeah. busy. It's like one of those. Lucy? Um, yes. Who was on the committee? Yeah, that's, 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 yeah she, but she's she moved away. She moved away. She's moved to Arizona. I was thinking of Lucy. Or no, Switzerland. Where did I get Arizona? Oh, she's somewhere, yeah. She somewhere. moved to Switzerland. Yeah. I, well, she was going to. I saw her sale for sale come by all yeah. my stuff in my house. I'm moving to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Lindsay. Yeah. Lindsay, I don't know her last name. She's gone. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, well, I can't, I, I can't. If you're looking for enthusiasm, that's one thing. But you're looking for skill. Right. It's something else. Anyway. Well, looking for both. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily yeah. all in the same person. 
We'd be you golden if we could, yeah. but... Well, you get enthusiasm. <laughs> I can't imagine the people in North Hyde Park Village, if, if, if Guyan Valley Hall energy is reflective of anything, I think that that's the, the trying hard to bring energy and... Right, and, right. And the two are going to have to come energy. together anyways at some point. Guyan, Guyan Valley Hall and the improvement of the town at some point are going to have to come together. Well, they have been the committee that took the lead on the LCPC planning stuff. So the right. visioning yeah. thing yeah. was yeah. They're done through them. them. Yeah. It's just that they could, can't. There are only so many people. Yeah. There are only so, so many people. And this is a big, a big opportunity. And it, I guess you kind of see it. I know you haven't come and hung out at the Gamble property, but you might do that one day for, you know, just see what's there and the potential for what could be there if, if you know if you could get the grant money to do that it would, it would be a massive impact it would, it would make the slowing down of the traffic and the signage be actually for you know a real village with stuff going on so on your packet there, you know, if you've got it in your phone, that 367 lot is what she's talking about. If anybody wants to go yeah, I should it. probably call it by its address, shouldn't I? I got I got hooked on another word, and that's why it's the 5211. Honestly, that's what I knew. That worked for me when you said the airport. I wouldn't have yeah. known 367. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> probably should tell I don't that you're 367. <laughs> It's just where that old red house used to be. The little bit. No, the red house is still there. Yeah, right next to Guy in Valley Hall. Right. That was an um, unfortunate missed opportunity. Are there any structures on that property? Okay, we'll be able to... There's a fallen down old pool house or shed or something, but it's covered in knotweed, so you need to know it's there. Uh, we more this now. Yeah. It's, well, it happens to be marked on the Notton Hyde Park sign, yes. so you'll know. Right. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, you identify it. Okay. It's the church um, property. Um, that doesn't matter. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Yep. Thank you for thank listening. You. And um, thank yeah, you for your hard work. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Yeah. I'm here. Next one is Robert Laird Mowing. They've been increased to 100 per month. Can I get a little bit of education? Where it came from? So, the worker who used to do all the town properties, and nobody got into trouble anymore, and so the, the, the saint hooked out there like you wouldn't believe. Wow, that's good. Glad okay, you like that? Yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. And so they pretty much canceled my program. And uh, um, so uh, we've got just a minor amount of people to maintain the fish and wildlife site. But anyways, we used to do all the properties and uh, at a very decent rate, and according to what we're getting charged now for, for everything. But um, And so the property more or less sat, and Roland and I would get together and come down here and, and mow and try to hay it, whatever we could to maintain it. And then Robert came along and yes. said that he would, uh, he didn't like the looks of it, so he'd mow it and try to maintain it for us. And so that's led into uh, more of uh, um, him now getting paid to, the, to do the work. And um, uh, it was at $200 a it's gone well, up. It's, yeah, it's, it's relatively quickly stepped up so yeah. last year he started mid-season that first one was volunteer how do you like what i did you know nice lines everywhere and all that stuff and then it was fifty dollars a, a mowing or something like that this year he started off in proposing two hundred dollars a month for mowing sort of as needed he's not reporting every mowing but it's sort of like as needed when it looks like it needs to be cut which isn't really all that much at this point of the season but Anyway, and then he just proposed an increase to uh, 300 for the remainder of this season, which is like five months to go. Mm -hmm. uh, we were paying about 1200 to the Department of Corrections three years ago before the crew was put back on the streets otherwise. Same. Yeah. Yeah. 
So now we're faced with a request uh, for but when you did 1200 that was for the fire department and everything, right? Well, the fire department got dropped, but uh, they had it, was, it, was, it was the library, French house, the little patch down across from the school, the, the welcome sign, uh, the Both patch heads. across the street here in this place. And then we also maintain the grass growing up around the salt shed and the other places up here around the um, Temple Road. So yeah, and at one time, yes, we did do the, the uh, fire department. You did rail trail a little bit too. Yeah, we did, yeah, did the, that, that spot down there uh, where people park and stuff like that, and we did that as well. And what and Robert's doing, the offices, the welcome sign, the rail trail. That's all I know of. I don't know if he does any village stuff. Right. Well, those half of the properties that Brian just listed are village properties. Right, so I Robert's only, town, only doing... Just the town things. Just the town things, right? Okay. And I don't believe he's been up to the garage. I don't, I don't think he's up. Up oh, there at all up there. around the garage buildings and things so it's less work than the doc was doing and i think for the amount of work and time he spends which is he's a really quick worker i mean he is if there's a hard worker it's robert Lair. He, he unloads those trailers it's like he's a rodeo he just gets on that thing <laughs> runs around blows everything <laughs> off and it, it looks good when he's gone i've caught him out here a couple of times and said, you make some nice lines you know yeah. that kind of thing but on the flip side, it's costly at this point enough to say, you know, he's a town employee getting a stipend. The rates that we're paying him aren't, they're, all, they're getting to the commercial rate. So well, that's generally yeah. what I said to Chas because we pay, we pay Brock 255 to mold the whole entire softball or baseball facility, which is 12 acres. And he we wax the whole thing. So 12 and a half acres of mowing. You compare that to what acres you have here. To what he's asking about. Yeah. That's what I'm doing right and now. And he mows how many times a month? Once a week? Um, he was really good at the beginning of the year. He texted me an image to finish mowing again. You know, that could, so I knew yeah. he was active, and right. I haven't gotten any of those in the last yeah. month. Well, it, it all slows right now. It so slows right, down. July is usually slow, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So it's not based on a certain amount of time. So oh, I thought just, it was. This is just a monthly fee. I thought it was based on a certain amount of time. Yeah, and he would do all the miscellaneous stuff on those three, well, two and a half properties, you know, really. Right. But so anyway, it's just it started out as a good volunteer community spirit feeling, and then he's going to help out, and now it's morphed into wait, this is not the same deal that we started out on. So that's why it's before you. And I understand he, he has his own business, or he's working on a small business. I mean, I totally get it, and I'm not I'm not here to make one dime and shit out of him. But as a select board member, a few months ago, we were, we were fighting our, our town people about not paying them to work on Christmas with a couple hundred dollars. So I, I, I don't know. Again, I, I'm paying Brock 255 and Nick one dime with him to do the ball field for us. So I, I have a hard time giving essentially the same pay for a guy that's going full age. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I. Well, no, 255, he does it more than once. Three times a month. Okay, so 255 each time? Right, so right about five and a half hours a month. No, I know that, but yeah. I'm asking the question. Yes. It's not 255 and 300, those aren't comparable. Because 300 is for if he does it once or four times a month. 255 is each time he mows Correct. there. He gives us So eight. it's a little different. Yeah. It's not really well, we could try, comparing apples We could ask, we could ask for Robert to go per but, time, right? Oh, absolutely. Why, why wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's a fair, yeah, that's a fair ask. Because like, if I look out there right now and the grass is seven, eight, nine, ten inches long, I'm getting, we're getting, the town people are getting porked. Right. So yeah. And the reason why we went and did it per time is because, same thing, nobody's using the fields for the next two weeks. We don't have Brock do it. So we'll say, hey, hold up on the fields. Right. Especially if they're getting burned. Right. So. Right. He knows about raising his deck and stuff like that. When it gets to July, you raise your deck up if it's Brock, or do you? A lot of times we just only have them for a couple weeks. Yeah. We only do it for the state tournament. And which when you have get, use, get paid, they get paid. They get paid as a town. Yeah. I think we get paid one hundred, twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. So do we want to pay him the three hundred, or do we want to make another proposal to him, or do we want to? Um, one thing I'd like uh, to do is see um, is that we get the branches that are just being left. When the branches fall off a tree, what we used to do is pick them up and 
throw them over the bank over here and uh, make sure the property maintained looked pretty look good when we got done. And uh, they're just he's just dragging into some branches been there for a month or better right now, sitting at the edge of the parking lot here now. So uh, on what account are we asking for the raises? Because fuel costs is that was that what you asked for? Yes. We should supply him with fuel. <laughs> yeah. Sure, he'd love it. In his truck when he moves the trailer from spot to spot. Yeah, I mean, well, you have an employee and a stipend, you can change that to whatever terms you want to change. We did have it more of a per mowing last I, year. I think it ought to be per mowing. You know, because they, and then they get exactly yeah, I, what he's going to do for that per mowing. Yeah, you know, just get a good itemized list. I'm like not totally comfortable that or confident that he's only doing those three. I'd be surprised if we were paying for the village property because we never talked about those. Yeah. that you listed up. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he's doing that. I yeah. I agree with Matt, but what I'd like to see for this year and then next year we'll do that. At least give him the money for the fuel for now. And then next year, make sure that, you know, um, all right, it's going to be per mowing or something like that. It, you know, keep going the way it's going now and just maybe meet him halfway of what he wants. Oh, yeah, two fifty. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with fifty dollars a month. And that will pay for the fuel. You think about fifty dollars a month? And that, then that's 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 a pretty good extra. Well, at least it pay for his fuel. Fuel yeah. has gone up there. Yeah, fuel has gone up well. Yeah, a dollar. And then, saves, saves you know, dollar I don't know if yeah. I would. Is that really the way it should have already been figured into it? Is it yeah. price for the equipment, the usage every day should have been figured into it, and then uh, uh, his gas. So if his gas went up, like you're saying, fifty bucks should should cover the increase. That's where I am. What do you think? Chess, your thoughts? I wanted the three hundred, so that's, I'm happy with two fifty. We're that's, freaking paving Beth Bailey's driveway for twenty five hundred dollars, and we can't give our mower guy that's and, a high pro. Wait a minute. Wait a I'm minute. like, we're not paying. We did Hilda's door yard. Jesus, right? So and we did, I'm waiting for we did it. my road. Me too. <laughs> Just keep giving everybody what they want. Jesus. So I'm fine. Fifty bucks is good. I think he needs to get something. So. Next year we could go out to bid and just say exactly. Yes, we'll absolutely. We have, well, yeah, right. Brock could come and do this we have too. Spalding mowing mm -hmm. that does all the cemeteries. Could they buzz through here? Exactly. And see what that price is and see what what Robert offers as a contracted person, not as an employee. Exactly. Right. Well, because exactly. that's it. He has kind of exactly. stepped up as a contracted person. And the only reason he, you did that for excuse me. No, the only reason you did that for an employee because he didn't have the charge, right? Right, correct. Right. Right. And he needed the insurance, so you helped him out there. Yeah, he correct. didn't have any of that. Did you understand so. that? Yeah. Yeah. So next okay. year, if he has the basic insurance <laughs> and he has his own business next year, exactly. right, he'd be in the ballpark with everybody else of mowing, mowing contractors in Hyde Park. Yeah. And he could bid, bid it out that way. Like, yeah. norm, like normal versus this kind of in a transition from you know, volunteer resident to now he's not quite like that anymore right. yeah that's his personal goal anyway i think is to get a m real mowing kind of business going so which so I, I like i agree with the guy in the in town we should, oh, yeah. we should want to be successful more but so we do 250 a month and it doesn't matter how many times it's more well Perfect. hopefully he's doing it once a week no yeah i think he skipped last week but you don't, well, really, that's you don't well, really need to do this one no. week. Oh, you don't? No, okay. no well, not, really, not this time of year. All, sure. It's all sand out here. Yeah. Yeah. There's no topsoil so in it whatsoever. You'll I guess, know more in October, though. Like, right? Great. So there's like. And he, a, and he yeah, only well, got. Exactly. That's what And he, he only got 200 for May and June, right. and he mowed every right. week. So. Right. So, so what was the deal? Did he mow it every week or every once a week? It was up to him to look at it and make, you know, because you can't force somebody to mow every week and kill the grass. Right. right. So, no. right. And we didn't want to, I mean, the town office people didn't want to like, especially up here, gauge when he needed to mow or not. So right. it was like a year long. We're just thinking, Brian, if it looked good, we didn't end up like we did last time. Oh, oh, I think so. For, and if, if it looks good to the mowing guy, it's going to look good to the right. taxpayers, it would hope, right? Anything's better than last year. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, probably a bid thing unless DOC comes back because they're about people start misbehaving again and yeah DOC back 
I, I enjoy the same what's going on around me. You know? I bet you do. I bet you do. <laughs> it's um. Yeah, I guess. I guess this year, again. I say, what is Armo and several other people that do that sort of thing? I know they're just adding to their bills now. Just so everybody knows, they're just doing a gas surcharge. For the future. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when the price of gas goes down, that will disappear. So here was their regular, again, lots for mowing. Our contract is every time they mow, here's what it costs. And, you know, in May, you're seeing them every seven days. So you can hardly keep up with it. And this time, you know, it rolls into and gets dry, and you see them once every two weeks, you know. But with it just comes the surcharge. So, mm -hmm. it, I mean, this seems like a hell of a surcharge for gas to me. That's all. Oh, you're talking <laughs> you know, twenty gallons uh, of gas, but, but uh, no, you're talking about hundred. His ad would be a hundred. His ad is a hundred. So you divide that by five. No, you don't divide by five. Fuel didn't go up by five dollars. Fuel went up from yeah. let's say. Is he have diesel or does he have uh, it's, gas? It's it's gas. It's yeah, but he was he was. So fuel, 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 fuel before, price. I just looked at the state na state average was two forty from uh, from April. I, I'm getting a dollar eighty one fuel surcharge per gallon right now on each train. So that's yeah. what I'm getting. Yeah. So he's probably doing four hours of motoring, you know, on the properties, which doesn't use a lot. I mean, he uses some gas, but you don't half a yeah. gallon or something. Or, so four hours a month. No, per. So how many times he does this? Probably about half an hour. That's a lot of time. It's time to wear something. He doesn't so, spend a lot of time here. He's ripping through here and he's out of here and he's got good, you know, he's got the right equipment, which is a valuable thing too. He's in and out. So it's all combined and it gets really complicated when you try to piece it apart. So if two, you know, say if 250 feels good for the rest of the year and he says yes or no, that, that's an answer. Yeah. Next, next year we go out to bid and, and well, put we let him know that next year we're, we're going to go out and go on up doing it as a per. So that he knows the change. We'll, bid it, we'll bid it as a per, and he, yeah. he'll okay. he'll be treated as a contractor next year. And it may cost us more that way. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, it is what it is too. You know what I mean? If you actually yeah. take a bid up, yeah. But this interim thing with him, with us kind of renting his equipment, and having an employee is a little squishy. Yeah, because it's cost. He can say whatever he wants, but he's an employee, so yeah. <laughs> it's like he's not on his own insurance when he does this. Right now. He's on town insurance he's an now. Employee. But using his own equipment. Yeah, so we're basically have a lease price within his lump sum every year. Hence the price. If you really want to get technical, you'd say fifty dollars, forty dollars of mowing for you, and we rent your equipment for seventy-five dollars an hour. And then you'd add it up and you send us a bill kind of thing as a way to account for both sides of that. We didn't get that far. <laughs> we were sort of in a mode of get this lawn mode and have everybody right, right. look look yeah. good, you know. And right. the, and we didn't take the time to do a bid because he was willing to kind of carry on with last year's arrangement. But now it's ramping up to a different thing than it was. I don't know what the other areas are. We don't need to pull on that or anything. We just need. Well, he's he's asked for your decision on a three hundred dollar ask, and you'll have to you should make a. Counter proposal is what it sounds yeah. like. And so you to look, to just it. put it out there for a bit and see what happens. That's what you you talk to. Him. Or, or ask, put ask, it out for a bit. Ask him for two fifty for you know. Put it out oh. there as a motion. Oh, I put it out. Oh, I'm like, what do you mean? Put it out there for a bit. Well, I thought you meant go out to bid with it. I'm like, what? We didn't put decide it to, to do a motion, that. And then we'll see where it goes. <laughs> uh, so I'll put out a motion to offer Robert a. Pro Proposal of two fifty a month, a month per month, starting in July. Yep, starting July one. Okay. Second. I'll second it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any? Aye. 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 It's another benefit of bidding. You just have a low bid was who? You know, the whole discussion's over. Right. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Okay, number five. Um, 2023 wage adjustment effective period, the pay period ending 7 10 22. I thought we voted on this, no? We just did, we did the lady upstairs. Yeah, yeah, we did everybody, no? No. no. You did I was it. kind of thinking that. You oh. had a couple months ago. Or something. 
Yeah, you do as part of the January budget setting. You'll come to a conclusion on what to include Got in the it. budget. And that carries forward till now for confirmation. Got it. So all you gotta do is confirm what we discussed. Right. And the other add is you know, for payroll purposes, we pick the uh, pay period ending that includes July 1. Which yeah. Oh, because uh, you're paid bi weekly. Yeah. yeah. Rather than split the payroll. So this is a it says hourly rate, but it has you listed as two thousand seven hundred and one dollars six cents an hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's short. <laughs> I, 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 I see that too, and I said, "What? You're not the supposed hell? to see that fine print." <laughs> well, oh, shit. believe me, I did. I said, what, kid, what kid makes too? <laughs> yeah, her hourly rates. Yeah, we're the wrong job. We're the same. Yeah, so is that my weekly salary? salary? Yeah, so yeah exactly. that's the bi-weekly adjustment. And then the um, you, you see flat rates in there and things like that. So mm -hmm. some of the positions, that's some of the positions that we hire, we, we come to an agreement that it's worth something and then that's it. And there's no adjustments from year to year until there's a need to adjust. That's like Matt Reed and Lane Delisle and Dale Nolan, those, those kind of jobs. What, what does Deb Slayton do at that minimum wage even? Is that um, library? Uh, no, she's under administrative, and yeah, that's not even minimum wage actually. So that's a good catch, Matt, because minimum wage is eleven fifty. Uh, it's probably higher than. Is it higher than? I thought it went up. The election, the election, the election, election people. Eleven fifty. I think so. Let me look. Yeah, it's, 1255. Yeah, there you go. I agree with that. 12. So, oh, whatever. 1255 now? Holy moly. Whatever it is, it should be minimum, not a dollar amount. Yeah, you can change that. It's a minimum wage. Was that what I call election worker? That should yeah. thank me. I, I just gave her a raise. Right? Well, we legally couldn't pay her that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that would be in big trouble. <laughs> that would be red fire. So, how does this work? Do we, do we, do we just go down the list? Do we just we just vote on this? We just say no, check, check, check. I think we just vote on the. Yeah, you make corrections to that page and then just approve the whole thing and sign the bottom. And Brian can make edits to it as you go. And is it here? Yeah. Okay. I have an unstable one if you want to. Yeah, let's do that. I'll just make the change that you have yeah. there. Yeah, it's pretty one. Yeah, if you, on that one you can just write M I N in there. And so I like first late M I N. Yeah. I I just want uh, amongst the board something that that on that kind of started to roll in earlier. We voted to make Jen upstairs at twenty two. Jason Wells, who works 50, 60 hours a week, just barely makes over that. And the guy that has 25 years' yeah. experience in the field. Yeah. That's not an overpaid wage right there compared to what we just voted upstairs. So that's, that's all I'm going to throw out there. Well, I have, I talked to, and actually, I don't, I feel like I need to go into an executive session to talk about this. I'm, I talked to Ron, and of course, you know, because they did the contract and, and then we agreed on it. At the time, it was a good deal, 3% for three years. And that was before the universe blew up. You know, the universe has now blown up. Um, and, and any of these guys could, could, could walk out of here and get a job locally for a hell of a lot more money, you know, and a big sign on bonus. And, and I can't, and then so when we got upstairs getting 4%, and these guys, yes, it was a high year, but the world has changed a hell of a lot since. And there are other towns around us who are doing, you know, what are towns around us, like, you know, in the, in the greater area, you're doing seven, eight, nine percent I'm like, I'm, I, I don't know, I don't feel good about this. I don't either. Okay, I don't, I don't feel good about this but, at all. Um, don't forget, they're in contract in a union, I get it. Don't forget. That's not their benefits. I, I know it's not their benefits. A lot of your contracts benefits. today, a lot of your contractors out there today, if you'll agree, don't pay the benefits that the town pays for. I don't know what the benefits are. Well, I can tell you that the contractors are not paying the benefits like the towns do. So you figure 
what do you figure around? Probably another eight dollars, nine dollars an hour on top of this. You're talking about highway. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, I mean, that's what uniform. That's the, yeah. The, well, well, I mean, that's going to be any point. So I'm not on a. I'm, yeah, the mar the market stuff for the competitive like contractor versus CDL highway versus uh, union. There's like three different categories. The union people are are fixed unless that contract is reopened. It, we could be legal problems according to the town attorney prior warnings. Right. If you mess well, with that contract, but, but you can also talk with them and say, "Can we do a one?" Right. That's what I'm You have to kind of you right. have to get there and say, yeah. "Do you want to do yeah. this?" So that's a separate discussion almost yeah. with the union people, and I think you have to be careful on the wording so it's just right. a market wage issue and you're not bringing into the other hundred things that you negotiate on. Yeah. That's the that's the well, give and take. One yeah. of, one of the other things that we had and way back had thought about is this the ARPA money that we have one of the uses that is valid is to, is to, if you will, sort of bonus pay folks that worked through ARPA, through COVID. Through COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to give them a, basically it's give them a bonus, I guess I wouldn't call it, give them a thank you, give them whatever you want. Yeah, that's something they call it hazard pay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Hazard yeah. Hazard yeah. Hazard. I, whatever they call it. It's a one-time thing for yeah. the past. So that, that's right, that, that it's a, it's a one-time thing because who knows where things are going to be in a year. And and you're right, really. I agree. We do pay good benefits. However, <laughs> you know, it's it's just and and you're right. And for upstairs, you're paying somebody the same thing. I'm just like it's not. Uh, it just it doesn't feel right to me. I mean, I look at the hours these guys work, and you think about the winter and everything. It's like yeah. Um, Okay, and look, I, I don't, I think we checked, it's probably been a while, but towns around us, you know, are paying. It's moving fast. You know, you're, yeah, it's you're really right. hard yeah. to capture yeah. anything. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, yeah. Well, and what, some towns are using us as a, yeah. as a stepping stone, too. Right, right. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I wouldn't be surprised if the union reps come in and ask for a special negotiation or special. What do we pay for benefits percentage for like health insurance? Is it 50%? If you add them all up, it's close to 50. Yeah. yeah Cause when we report female wages, we're doing like 22 to 35 with benefits. Like that. Just a ballpark. Right? Yeah. That's, Everybody's I was just curious. A few dollars yeah. of that. And, but, and healthcare is like an easier, how are you now getting it? Yeah. That's variable because you're getting it through us or if you're getting it through your but, spouse, so your spouse, we pay you something. Yeah, fifty percent is not good. That's not great. Yeah. For health and benefits, that's not that's not considered. Good but benefit. the ones that don't take the medical insurance get a extra. Yeah. At the get end of the, so opt, we have an opt out payment for if they don't take it. So that's not represented in that, though, right? No. 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 So you, no. We don't see that there. No. 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 This no. is just no. the hourly stuff. This is just the hourly stuff. So the. Um, State of Vermont and healthcare changed the rules for eligibility on the Vermont really Health Act and all that stuff. So a lot of people would do the spouse and child, and it used to be we would get all family. So whatever the whatever the math is on a lot of these family plans doesn't work as well anymore. Oh so, yes. So we actually don't have a lot of family plans, which has we have under a hundred thousand dollars a year for all of our health benefit costs, which is huge for nine people. Just because we have the combination of the state healthcare changes plus the opt out, we got four, four or five people opting out out of the nine, which yeah, saves yeah. about seven, saves a lot of money. seventeen or fifteen thousand dollars a year for those employees not charging the taxpayers. Right. For that. right. It's about a five thousand dollar payment on top of for opting out. School does that. Teachers have yeah, a lot, a lot, yeah, of, a lot yeah. of places do it. So they're contracted. We don't even need to discuss it anyway. So. What do we need to do? We just need to make a vote on this. Obviously, Robert, yeah, the three Robert, Robert Layer is in here, so we're going to have to change that one in this, in this thing. Yeah. Well, if we accept it. Yeah, the flat ones I think we're good with. I think Dale, Nolan, uh, Mark, and I were talking about that. I'd like to see that up to 18 myself. Yeah, so if, I think that was a. He wasn't negotiating for himself. It was just Mark and I. Oh, I, 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 yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, yeah, I, I, looked at, I looked at the pay. And, I mean, well, he, he doesn't have the CDL, so we can't, right, we can't right. get him to 19, but right. you know, 18 is yeah. fine. And they're, they're both part-time on call, so it's not like we're 
exactly. calling them all the time either. You know, it's, it's they have an option to not come in. His rent is expensive too. <laughs> well, 19, 19 matches a CDL driver, so we we're trying even to even make like blame between CDL. Oh, 18. Oh, yeah, because yeah. no, he, he has a CDL. Yeah, that's true. You just touch somebody with a CDL. Just made it eighteen on my okay. And you pay hundred percent of the health insurance, make it twenty bucks. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But Bl is Blaine, Blaine's just on call too, right? Yeah. He's at 19 for CDL. Right. Matt Reed is uh, flat for 20. That's what Julie was making when she left. So when he was the last man standing and Mr. So we're going to hang on to him. Move that. To <laughs> yeah, he's been good for consulting services. Great. Like, or trying yeah. to figure this reappraisal stuff out. Good. Or the grand list maintenance out. Any other guesses? Mm, nope. <clears throat> okay, the motion to accept this the way we discussed. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstaining? I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining. Yep. I don't know. Right. I, I just I don't I don't think we're paying them enough. Well, then you should say no. You can't abstain, right? Yeah, I can abstain. I don't want I don't want to get in a big fight about it, but I just I don't I don't think but I don't think it's right. As Matt said, they might the union rep can can come represent them, right? They could do it one time, so that that'd be up to them. They do pay dues. Yeah, and he was. <laughs> Yeah, you think they can open up a can of worms too. Yeah, exactly. They don't <laughs> want to open. I'm just, I'm just feeling that if we were proactive, then we don't get the can of worms. That's all. That's all I'm trying to avoid. Because at the end, and I, again, maybe they're all happy and not thinking of going anyplace else. I have no idea about. I just. It's a great place to work. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, sir. Those will be effective just for the mint, the record on the motion at 7 10 22 pay period ending. Yeah, you're going to fill in Roberts or no? No, because he, yeah, we, we, right, we'll have to propose it to him and then. Then they'll add it. So you see we don't, we don't have a tax rate right yet. Like. Except we need a special meeting when they come in. Friday night. Might okay. be Wednesday, maybe. Yeah, after yeah. Like so. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the mail it's now. We'll get it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'll, I'll call you, Brian, if we get it. Yeah. yeah. It could be just a phone call type thing. Come on. Go out there. <laughs> And number seven, letter of hire for Dale and Owens on call position for highway. And this is seventeen fifty, but we decided eighteen dollars. Yeah, they already voted that, so it's just yeah. that part will be letter of hire. Yeah, if you want to have a motion that um, hire. you can. I just change the letter of hire, but if, um, you can authorize me to sign. I can get it to him. I guess that's the easiest way to do that. Yeah. I need a motion. Yes. I'll make a motion. Second. All papers see the point of saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? I was going to say, I probably ought to abstain from this one. Yeah. <laughs> the tax rate stuff, we skipped over that I one. I just was looking at that. So that, yeah. the tax rate we, we haven't received it's not ready yet. Yeah. No. It's an accident. It's an accident. So we just say we we're working with that's on the next. Yeah. Do they know? Is this normal that it's a slave? They promise it by July first. So. Of course they do. So you're so, going to get it tomorrow. The thirtieth at four o'clock. I'm just guessing we'll get it tomorrow morning or the day after, and we'll have to call around for a special meeting to. Are you still on the book? Yeah. Yeah. So when we get it, we'll have a. Phone call or something real quick sometime when everybody can do it. Okay, okay number eight, Tech Group IT Managed Care 
two year contract. We had a long presentation last year, uh, I think earlier, maybe last year, March, when we were talking about a whole palette of things to put in place for internet security, virus protection, employee training, just everything that people should be doing with businesses that have access to servers and town information and all that stuff. And the board decided to split it up into two years. We did a bunch last July 1, and we have that now cloud cloud backup, redundancy stuff, um, improved malware systems that are their own little thing that are updated all the time themselves. So it's all almost in background stuff. You know, there's no, there's no town employee managing any of this stuff. Tech group does it all. They send us alerts if there's issues. If we see something funky, we send them an email. They respond with, don't worry about it, or thanks for telling us, we'll check it out. Yeah, they can go up with the VPN stuff too. They can do that for us, uh, for the remote access. You know, they, uh, the, we have a Barracuda email system, which oh. is an elevated level. Yeah. And we have to go into our email from Barracuda and look at the wow list. You know, manage yeah. <laughs> so all that stuff is managed sort of off site. And we did about half of that uh, menu, if you want to call it that. The, this July, when I include in the packet, is the rest of those things. So overall, it's going to be close to 20000 a year for the IT services for the town. That server maintenance, you know, all the, all the things that are recommended and to keep up with it because it's changing all the time. So that's what tech group's role is. Uh, cheaper than an IT person and staff. It's one way to look at it. Um, they also provide services like when we have a new employee and we need to set them up with all new software and emails and VPNs and all this other stuff. They'll help that employee do it directly. So the employee knows a little bit how to do it themselves too, which is good instead of somebody saying, you're all set. They actually work with tech group with a you know, shared screen type thing to get that person all sort of trained on their own machine. So it works out pretty well. Those, those individual things are additional fee. So there's a base fee every year, which is the managed care program of many different things all made up into one system. And then there's an hourly charge for these call out special. Yeah, there's a minimum for it. And the, if it's on a weekend, it's uh, minimum two hours at $300 an hour for that. And then, uh, um, there's other things here too. They're, they're getting it's 150. It's 150 hours an hour for the help desk. It's 175 yeah. hours for security. Um, yeah. yeah. The only time we use those are a lot. There's two times. One is when we have a new employee, and that usually takes about a week to two weeks for that person to get all set up and cleaned up and tested and find a problem, fix it. And then there's the problems where something goes down and like a lightning strike which we'll be submitting for reimbursement up there because we're still recovering from that. So the LCT said to add it up and send us a bill, a $1,000 deductible, um, but they helped us get through that and get us back online. It wasn't that things melted, but switches got turned and software got reset and it was sort of like the guts of things that they had to go in and reprogram. Yeah. So it was, anybody, it was messy. Did anybody else see the error in the uh, contract that they did? There's one more error in there. There was an error? Yeah. Is this a test? <laughs> He's gonna find it. Where's Waldo? I know. <laughs> find that error. Could use a different town sometimes.
Hmm. I failed this task. I don't <laughs> you caught chastity. She can't find it. I'm like, uh, I'll give you a hint. Okay. Holidays. Oh, okay. I did just look at those. You're saying all the things I read today. Oh, they did near. Oh. They work for free on Christmas Day. Christmas Eve, they love you, big boys, on that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. Yeah. So they need to make an adjustment on that if they want to get paid for. Where we leave it? Oh, where we leave Hopefully, it? we're not working on Christmas Day, so nothing happens, right, Ron? We would never call them. <laughs> you can wait. <laughs> When we know what happened. I'll right. let them know it's there, though. They might, exactly. Yeah, they might want to, might want to get a pretty big on getting paid on the Christmas Day. Yes. Well, they worked. They should have got paid. It's a little bit different. <laughs> they did get paid. <laughs> <clears throat> So do we need to vote on that? Yep. Yeah, there's two parts. One is to sign the contract and have it effective for a two year period. It just, all it does is freeze next year's rates. Oh, that's way, it waves, it waves a fee, so. If you did two years. Onboarding charges for new services waived for two years. Okay, yeah. So those are the three or four things we're adding this year. They won't. Where is that? Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Oh, I guess it's me. <laughs> they wrote my name. So you just want them to authorize you to sign it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That'd be fine. Yeah, we can do that. Then we have to change the contract. So we're, we're, we're no, uh, what do I want to say? Put out the, uh, uh approve the two year. Yeah. Then okay, so a me. motion to approve the two year contract. Authorize Ron to sign. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Okay. Now that sounds good. At, so, the, at the wage, of, at the range of whatever, 1300 a month. Not to exceed any more than that, correct? Whatever yeah, this was signing this proposal. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor, see anybody by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, abstaining? There you go, we're on. Thank you. Local emergency management plan amendments uh, request by BEM. So this one is assigned to uh, VEM is taking a closer look at statewide consistency in their emergency management planning, which includes every town's LEMP, which identifies all the important people that will respond in an emergency. And they wanted us to make two tweaks to it, uh, three, well, three tweaks, I guess. And I didn't update the paperwork, but I, if you approve of the amendments, then um, Brian would be authorized to sign it when it's updated. So that's the document that basically what they said was that there's uh, statewide positions that are used in every town for VEM. And we had one extra one called deputy EMD. And not many towns do that. We're trying to make sure it's just EMD and EMC. They don't want the middle one. And it's vacant now anyway. So they probably should have just taken it out and they wouldn't have a comment. The other one that is why they wanted it to go back to you for a vote was the um, clarification on the $10,000 purchasing. So if somebody has an issue, uh, an emergency in town, there's three people that would be authorized to spend money. Uh, fire chief, EMD, and um, what's on page two, Brian, I think. <laughs> they wanted to see the positions on the LEMP. On the top right there, there's there's a $10,000 uh, 
under and a ten thousand dollar over very first line there with the blue ink. Okay, yeah. Is the ten thousand under a fire chief, town administrator, uh for ten thousand over or ten or under ten thousand. You were over or under? Yeah, so yep, yep. So anyway the the if there's a big disaster, anything that adds up to over ten thousand, which is pretty easy to do in a major disaster, yeah. then I would be notified of that. If the fire chief needed some emergency piece of equipment for five thousand bucks, they can do that and then eventually report it as done. If that piece is ten thousand two hundred, then it's supposed to go to the town administrator to get um, basically inform the board that way. But that's so that was a threshold that wasn't in the first draft that they wanted to say who can spend that first ten thousand. Oh, got it. Yeah. And then yeah. when do they have okay. to go to the yeah. town administrator? And basically, it's anything over ten thousand by any of those three people goes to to town administrator for for you. No. Is would Mark French wouldn't be listed on there for the highway if there's an emergency? Or uh, I'm just thinking of a road emergency, but oh, no, was, well, would that be different? No, it's okay. not that different. Okay. But town administrator and road foreman are together during emergency. Perfect. Good. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So it doesn't have to so, necessarily be labeled. Yeah, there's going to be so much damage that it's automatically to go right. to right. right. Okay. <laughs> so we didn't need to call. He's <laughs> not. He's and he's not constrained if he's. Because we're working on emergencies. Right. So okay. It's Got one it. of those things where the board's going to hopefully go to the uh, emergency operations center and get their updates as we come back and report stuff. And get so really we bad. don't have to worry about this, but yeah. Yeah, okay. we should have a dry run on that. We never did that before with the select board, but with Erica in the mix, you know, she could almost help out a little. It's, right. It's very, well, it's not <laughs> she's in the mix, but she's a local resource. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, to have the um, tabletop exercise is kind of interesting if you can get it down. A lot of tabletop exercises that you go to with Vermont Emergency Management or some of the regional ones are all day long. You know, yeah. is there any way to get like a mini tabletop yeah. in a select board meeting? Yeah. Because a lot of the stuff you're not going to pay attention to. And then all of a sudden there's an emergency and you're wondering why you have to go to the fire station. Right. You know, why Mark isn't picking up the phone. Yeah. Because that's not the protocol. You go to the public information officer. Right. Or the town, you know, so there's certain things that will change yeah. during an emergency because of the way the LEMP is written and how things flow that you're not aware of, right? Because we don't practice it, yeah. <laughs> and we hope we never have to use it. Roland, but Roland's the guy, Roland's the guy, and then he, he better know what's going on. Yeah, Roland's the one that <laughs> Roland's the only one as the EMP. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even paying attention never now. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't have to. Roland's the only the best one. Plan. Roland is actually the only one in the town that can open the emergency operations center. He has to actually order that and report it to the state of Vermont. Oh. That activates the state emergency operations center that we got something going on, and they will connect and send resources if we need. Oh. So anyway, that's just an interesting EMD. Role. And that's where Mark's supposed to get a hold of me, and then I'm supposed to get a hold of Ron. And, and then we just make a decision real quick. That, yeah, we're in over our heads. We've got to get everybody. We need help. help. Yeah. yeah. Help. 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 That's right. So if the motion is to approve the LDMP with the amendments and have Brian sign it. So moved. Second. Good. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Good How's catch. that? Good catch. <laughs> All the favorite thing all right. Uh, Are we We're reading over there. You're so content. Let's play a game. No. no. <laughs> yeah, it's just. No, I'm kidding. World. Uh, you educate yourself. I can see uh, it. Yeah. Uh, it's just amazing, though. Oh, goodness. Because she, she emailed me today. And, uh, she. It's just, no. <laughs> you know, it's just like FEMA guy told me when I went through this several times. Every, every event is different. Right. You can train, you can train, you can go sit down for hours in a room. Yeah, when you get know. out there, yeah. everything is totally different. Just but like if you do fire, right? the protocols or an accident, that they you told me, to you never do, know what you're gonna. It works. Be walking into because I don't know if we get any kill tags or not. But right, go to every site and mark it down and put a kill tag in there. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of it. 
Yeah, any type of tag, you know, like you said, a number. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure they're numbered. Yeah. Well, like the like the lady said, a, a yogurt top tonight with the yeah. numbers. I know. Yeah. There you go. I was, when she kept saying that, I was giggling. I was like, oh, a yogurt top. Perfect. Recyclable. Perfect. <laughs> Using them recycling. I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought somebody was shooting at it the other day. There's one up in the bottom of them. So I was thinking that somebody was shooting at it. <laughs> and it was for the not weed. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, approval of the minutes for review of 6 14 22. They looked good to me. Yeah, I read them, they look good. We'll make a motion to approve them. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any? Uh, Have we seen anything from uh, Tom Ward's yet? On the audit bar, he was going to get you the. Remember, he left here saying he was going to do an application. No, he submitted the application okay. the, the next day. Okay, so he did follow up. Yeah, he followed up, and then I have to go review it and see exactly what he added or didn't add because there's some things on his original site plan that I need to make sure on his new application. I just didn't have time to do that yet. Everything's built. It's one of those times. Apparently it works because she did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Made it through. Uh, so, other business it would be updated on regional town assessor. That was a good meeting, I thought. It's, an, in it's an interesting, yeah. So, Brian and I attended a, a regional meeting, I guess you'd call it. Uh, talking about what towns in general are doing about the uh, depreciating, reducing number of listers, local listers, local volunteer listers, you know, the, the paid semi-professional listers that Julie Rolletter was sort of like, or the contracted assessors that are out there at, you know, 65, 95, $115 an hour. And the towns are making those choices now. What what do you want to do? So uh, the Morristown town assessor, who's contracted by Morristown to support their three elected listers, who are perfunctory, they sign things and they don't go out in the field or anything like that, but they are effective board supported by a hired town assessor. She saw the writing on the wall that everybody that's in this particular field is 65 and over. I think she said the average is 62. Is that her number? Yeah, I think that's the right number. Yeah, and she didn't see anybody new coming up, and she wants to try to solve that somehow. And one way she wants to solve that is for some towns to join together with a municipal town assessor. Right, that was the woman she came and talked to. Yep, yeah. Yeah. and then she yeah. wants to tie into the schools, and the last piece was how do you manage it? So this was more of a management gotcha. discussion about how you make this thing work. So I invited uh, Tasha Wallace from Mutual Planning to see because she can now provide, uh, what you, uh, I can't remember the term, it was like municipal administrative services or yeah, something. Yeah, somebody could, you can be careful in the wording. Yeah, yeah, she's limited in what she can actually do for towns, but she can be payroll, a little bit of supervisory structure, you know, so that if one town drops out, that was the host town, because you have to have somebody doing payroll on that consistently, that they would be there potentially longer than towns coming and going into this agreement. That was the main basis of that. And she's already set up because she does that now through regional planning services to towns. We, we, we do it for planning services, for example, now. Northwest Regional Planning does it for zoning administrator. Um, the the um, Northeast Kingdom does it for some other administrative planning type things. So there are regional examples, but nobody's doing town assessment. So this would be new for the state to have PBR, which is the state people working with Terry, who's a consultant town assessor and five towns on a new kind of thing. So the people that were there, which is Johnson and Eden, uh, not Eden, Eden. Well, Johnson, Holka, Hyde Park, Virgins. We were talking about Elmore, but uh, Elmore yeah, came up. Okay, it did come up, but we were going to reach. There was somebody going to reach out to him to see if yeah, they're interested. Really Linda interested. Martin was going to reach oh, out. Oh, it was to him. Yeah. yeah. So Linda's, Linda Martin is select board, and Wolka was going to connect with the select board in Elmore to see if they want to join because they're seeing the same thing happen. Right, yeah. Uh, Linda's husband Tom is at 
he's getting ready to not do it anymore. He's been there for 30 something years and nobody's come behind him. Yeah. You know, so we, we're in this transition. Johnson voted out the board of listeners like we had asked this past March. And so right now, July 14th is a regional planning executive board meeting. And Tasha is going to present this concept of joining with some towns. The only problem with all this is that this is a brand new thing that's structurally different for all these towns and the regional planning commission, which it going back to boards every two weeks or four weeks is going to take some time. And our contract with Nemrick runs out June 30th. Oh, right. Between June, July and October, there's not a lot going on. So we have like a, a, a dead spot in the grand list maintenance process. There's still things that have to happen. Yeah. But it's not like getting ready for the grand list update, which is really busy from you know, January to April, June-ish kind of window. So if Tasha is able to get some kind of interest from her executive board that they want to target and set up an MOU or some kind of agreement, then the towns would all have to join and have a vote back here saying, here's how it's going to run. Here's the agreement. Here's who's doing it. Here's how much it's going to cost. Do you want it? Who got two hours a week, four hours a week, eight hours a week, whatever. And then that person would be an employee, not a contractor. So there's a little bit more direct control over that person. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about things like being in the office from noon to three in Hyde Park, just to push papers and meet with people if needed. And Terry was kind of poo-pooing that a little bit during the meeting. She's like, in all the towns I work with, nobody wants to talk to me. They send me an email and I get back to them. But I don't think that's what we were really looking for. You know, I think we were looking for some set hours, even if it's just to push papers and get and talk to yeah. the town clerk and say And if hi. everyone knew that that was the time that the listers and Yeah, office. maybe five yeah, hours right. or offsite and remote or just right. doing state work. Because they're really state workers. They're not town employees, even though we'd like to call them that. They're right. really state workers under their rules. We're just doing the administrative thing for them. We don't direct them. The state <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. We don't have any lister requirements here. It's state of right? no, no, no. because the state tells us what we have yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I just can't believe that in the next ten years, it's just not going to be anything local. It's just going to be a statewide assessor team that comes out yeah. and does each town. Crazy. That yeah. guys, it should be doing that. There's now. no way that 250 towns can fill that position. There's not enough. There's not enough contracted assessors to do that. Exactly. When, when we passed Act 60, Dick Marion and I were falling on our swords to say you need to go to regional estate. Yeah, you know, it just makes sense. Should've you should have then. the state should have. Man, I'm telling you, the town clerks and the lid, they were like, it's the end of the universe. It's the end of our go saying it's never going to work. Like, now we're there. I, I, I saw him about a year ago and he said, I, we knew it was never going to work. You know, it just, it's just not possible. It's just so, complicated. Yeah. Well, and they, they don't stop. You know, the standards go up. Yeah, exactly. So, so we're waiting yeah. for the 14th and then the LCPC board doesn't meet in August. You know, it's one of those oh, things. Yeah. Okay, so, so August would be the town's turn to take their local votes to see if they want to participate. And then maybe if we're really super lucky, October would be a yeah. positional type thing where things are all ironed out with, you know, the towns and region are working together in September. That's kind of the outline that I was hearing at the meeting. It wasn't going to happen quick just because there's, yeah. there's yeah. weeks in between these board meetings. And I, and I don't, and, and we're going to run a report, or Jennifer's going to run a report, I'm asking her to do more reporting. Yeah. Uh, she's going to run a report on the NEMRIC cost for FY22, just to see what that is. You know, 17000 whatever, and we had budgeted you know, 12000 What's the new position? 15000 Yeah. That's a good deal. It gets more service and more employee control for a couple thousand less. I don't know. I'm just throwing them. Yeah. Well, Something like that. Well, I mean, there are people are going to be ripping out their hair. What are you going to do with the with appraisals? I mean, everybody's completely blown out of the water with what properties are selling for. Exactly. I mean, every town's got to be completely and totally out of whack. Yeah, yeah we saw no, we're looking at a great recession to keep talking about the come bill. We're not going to worry about the It's going to happen. It never seems to happen terrible. Well, it happens a little bit. Go ahead. That's the last fall for the union. Yeah. The last pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to go to recession, why do you stuff? Yeah. 
If you could get a 12% mortgage, it was a great deal. Yeah. <laughs> and the people complaining now are going, oh, God, you got no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, more information to come. Can, can, can I take something back? Can I go backwards? This no. hour, can you go backwards? <laughs> can we go back to this hourly rate that we voted on this? Yeah. There's something we didn't talk about. The, the library, Amy Olson. They're proposing a three dollar and twenty cent raise for her. Yeah, the library already brought that to us a while ago. We voted yeah. on that. It was in the budget. Mm -hmm. It was in their budget. It, they when they presented their budget. Okay. Yeah, they did all those increases. Yeah, yeah that's unchanged. That might have from been January was before me. Yeah, you might not. He might not have been on the no. board yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, every, yeah, the now, library has that that every money. Yeah. Every year, the trustees set the July one library wages in January, basically, so they can bring the proposed impact of that to the select board in January. Yeah. And then the select board pushes it to the voters at town meeting day. So it's, um, it's and, and the only thing that could have happened, because I don't think the select board, the select board probably could have negotiated with the trustees on anything in their budget, but the trustees could always go to the voters and say, approve whatever exactly. they want. So right. it's kind of like, it's better to work with the trustees during that December, January period when things are getting ready to a final budget. But generally it's not gonna be overturned by the voters if the select board pushes it to the warning. So that's your chance. That's really the chance that you you weren't here for. Yeah. That library budget's a big one. It has to be. It's grown a lot, yeah. You look at the bill of what it costs for buying books and stuff. They made the news this morning, though. Yeah. That was Brian. exciting. Brian, I'm just looking at the payroll, and payroll, oh, and the payroll was half of what we paid for upstairs. Well, but they're right, and their payroll went up because they no longer have volunteers. Right, they're one of the organizations that they lost all their volunteers with COVID, and they haven't come back, and that it's not safe. To be in the library with only one person. Yeah, they have to have two yeah. at all times. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they've got three floors and they've got instances. <laughs> Just because okay. you don't read that. <laughs> I do. I have the www. <laughs> look, look on your face tells it all. Yeah. Don't say nothing. <laughs> National Opioid Settlement. Oh, yeah. See, we get a bunch of money for that. Huh? Ooh, okay. <laughs> that just something that, that came that along and you just got a check and a letter? Two yeah, two years ago you had the choice of signing a letter, which Susan signed yeah. saying, You want to sure, sign this and be considered? Right? So we sent it in. And two years go by and we get a dollar dollar twenty six. Hey! So, so you do if it, was, if it was real money, you'd have more of a choice because you could yeah. say reallocate it to an agency. Yeah. You, yeah. Could, you could choose Oh, that. true. But just since $126 administratively is going to use it up anyway, between yeah. both ends trying yeah. to process $126. Right. So I was right. just going to say. I think we should we'll, probably put it at the library fund. We, <laughs> yeah. We could say we want to make a donation to Jenna's Promise, oh, right? Or county, yeah, at at town meeting or something. Yeah. 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 You could whatever is eligible, yeah. well, or we can okay. just put miscellaneous revenue and and you know have that in your unassigned fund balance. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's that was the question. Do you do you want to go through the exercise of trying to pick somebody to send a hundred dollars to, or you're right, administratively yeah. that doesn't seem put it in a minute on this yeah. miscellaneous revenue basically and, and call it a day on this. Yeah, I would put it in miscellaneous revenue. Yeah. I was looking through the list to see, you know, there are towns that got like two dollars. I, I was just, I was peeking through it too. I'm like, oh, three dollars and one cent. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. Cost it more to send the check. I know. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Oh well. Now, we already talked about Bailey's driveway. Right? And the possible. No, do you want to do the plumbing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we have the regional yeah. reps and the plumbing and Krista Jones. Yeah. Three people and oh, and I do have something for other business too um, that I thought was kind of interesting that my brother told me last night that Mark French bumped into the DMV guy like at the bottom of the driveway and he said, "Hey, if you're ever around, could you come up? We just got a new trailer. Could you come up and make sure we know that we are buck uh, what do you call it? Chaining down the equipment correctly." 
just because they wanted didn't know if rules had changed since they'd all since Ryan had hauled equipment or whatever. So he gave the DMV guy his cell phone number and he called him and went up there and they had chained it down and they did it perfectly. So it was fine. Well, but I thought that was kind of nice. She was like, yeah. I'm like, like, are you sucking up or what? Yeah, yeah it they'll was. Do, they'll do it as a safety inspection. Yeah, I didn't realize they did that. I mean, they should, but so, so yeah. And that goes further. I'm sure. Yeah. So I could so, do it, and they wanted to make sure, like, the, okay. the they were up to par because they weren't sure. But whatever. I can't. Where you go? Come on. Whatever. So, binders. Yeah, binders. That was what he said. Yeah. So everything was not come was legit yeah. and safe or whatever. So. Plumbing. <laughs> Plumbing. Pretty, pretty cool. Plumbing. Plumbing. Uh, we've had Menashe here multiple times, uh, jet, jetting the line from top and bottom, trying to find out where there's a blockage. The last time was last night. They left and they had cleared out just enough where I was flushing toilets, like around six o'clock. Everything was disappearing and we're like, yay, they found the blockage. I actually did see the blockage come out near the guy that was checking. It was not nice. <laughs> he had to get out of the hole. It was oh. bad. So we knew that it, was a, it wasn't a new thing. It was sitting up there for a while, somewhere between this floor and the second floor. And it's a cast iron pipe that <laughs> probably has some interior roughness that grabs things and slows things down. They camera it? What? Yes. They camera it? Yeah, they, yeah they, they can get through it and see the camera, but they, they can't tell how, how wide it is exactly, but they see stuff get hung up on the sides and recommended that we um, open the wall between the two floors. Yeah, yeah. 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 sure. Yeah. Can you put a reamer through it? No. You just took that black iron. He just took a jet. Yeah, it's there's gone. gone. He said there's... I would say it. <laughs> you take a rumor to it, it'd definitely be gone. <laughs> it's almost flat outside between the house and the tank. So there's almost no grade there, and that's also a cast of paper. So he, what you can do for sort of cheap is there's cast iron under the foundation here to get to the middle of the building. He wouldn't necessarily do that, but he would do everything that's relatively easy and get the cast iron out of here and put the four-inch green... PVC outside. How much concrete you're going to have to bust up? Uh, it's, it's too much. <laughs> it's like 30 feet. It's from the corner of the building to that wall over there. It's almost all the way across the floor here. Well, I can tell you who's an expert at that. But it goes under the vault and it goes under the extra, uh, I don't know, That's we're talking about probably $10,000 probably if you were to get the floor done. <laughs> and then the outside and then the wall. And then you got to ring it. <laughs> so, well, well, why would you, you? I don't even know the repair job down here. I would probably look at a very bare bones repair job, like even leave the wall open and the storage room over there for the wall. So, so they said the pipe comes in how far? It comes in from that corner, goes into the bathroom, hooks up with the bathroom, goes into that wall between the two, this office and the, and the bathroom. It goes straight up to the other bathroom. That's all cast iron. Up there. It would be easier to come from that bath and leave the current one uh, going sure. down here, than come across and down oh, with just, plastic and just, just eliminate that. Yeah, yeah, you know, all that. So that was the idea. You know, what do you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a plumber, but we can call like county plumbing. Can you solve this for us cheaply? Kind of question. <laughs> Right. Because yeah, just, el just eliminate the old system and put in a new one. No, we can leave. You can almost leave it if you run the right pipe. You exactly. Just, you can abandon it and just not. Yeah, that was not all black right. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's where we're stuck. Yeah. And the bathroom doesn't work upstairs. So that one we're everything. this one still works. Even oh. It's a little tenuous because it's on its way out. There's, the water shutoff doesn't work anymore. So if the pipe breaks, you have to shut off the main. If the main is shut off, we can't have the building here. I don't think the office, we'd have to relocate yeah. the offices without water. It's like, it's like a little time bomb going up. So if the plumbing people can come through and say, here's a good solution, take it here, dig it there, run some new pipe, and it's 15,000 bucks. Now, now I don't know. does the pipe go underneath the, yeah, the safe? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it does. <laughs> That's exactly. what I'm saying. That's what we're saying. Right. Run, it, run, it, right. run it up and out through the joist and between the space here, if you can. Yeah, right. If you've got the bathroom downstairs, you'd have to 
Put and how would it fix that? Put a pump in there. You go. But that's not. It's got the jet now. It for the amount of. Uh, that's what the plumber will figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Get Eddie over here. Yeah, Eddie would. Oh yeah, he's he's famous for that. Anyway, so that's what the situation is. Right right uh, upstairs staff is getting frustrated, got obviously, because we had to fix for them. until like two o'clock today. And then they flushed one that more time, time and he just busy. sat there and it started to burn. Oh, no, I thought we were good for at least a couple of weeks. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to stop using that cleanly toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, definitely, it's definitely a pipe problem. Black iron. Yeah. It catches on everything. But, you know, it's been in there for 40 years, 50 years, yeah. 1972 building. It just got old enough that it got a little more friction, I guess, or something. And it just catches it more. I don't. I don't know about the bike. He'd um, set up. He'd probably come over early enough in the morning to give you an idea. Yeah, I mean, it, we're, we're stuck for listening. ideas right now. And they were. Like yeah, said. were you not listening? No, they were not <laughs> listening. They were he, talking. They were not. Listening. Yeah, County was yeah. here last night. <laughs> it's okay, Rolly. Too much. I heard it all. Actually, County came too. Right? Beat the ball during the day. There. Yeah, right? County came too. <laughs> Manash has been the one just trying to figure out the bigger pieces and the county's got to take it from here. Yeah. Manash is done doing what they can do to their stuff. So that's, that's an odd, we'll just we'll look for some good ideas yeah. and that don't involve digging up the vault. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Yeah. So, oh, man. What was the um, when, uh, 110 wire that they played the set to have the uh, Sending it or something. Yeah, it's a piece of something they found in there. There's a whole bunch of debris in there. I saw oh, Mark said he found a little piece of wire like six inches long or something. It, it looked yeah, like where they were digging. It was a piece of wire, but it didn't look like it was ripped or torn. I went out and um, just it. changed it. Is it up there now? Yeah, you can see it right now. Go look at it. On the start side, it was walking this way. Okay. Yeah. And then. And you did call the success? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're up there. Yeah, I didn't know there was an emergency for that. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So that's what Mark used. Yeah. So that was good. Yeah. Okay. Regional um, reps. Uh, Greg Paz is interested in being a director, which uh, he just got appointed executive board, which is the one meeting on July 14th at regional planning. He's interested in two years. Richard Pearson wants to sort of finish up, I think, but he's agreeing in one more year as the TAC representative. So those are the two people we appoint every year. Um, and they actually started something new this year where they can pick one, two, three year terms. So Greg picked two and Richard picked one and I think Brian's got to sign the, uh, uh, yeah. be authorized to sign the appointment forms. We sign Greg, yeah. And this one for Christy. Do they, they review all the all of the all the yeah, permits that get all the permits that get brought to you, they review all of those. Is that is that what they who does? Like our this and ours, this is the county. Oh okay, this is the county. Yeah, this is the county. county. Okay. No, the county has an option to enter into a Act two fifty review if they would vote to do that, but they typically don't let they don't enter an appearance usually. They let the towns and the state duke it out usually. Okay. That's the only thing they ever get involved with in permit. They're mostly about grants and technical assistance type of stuff. So a motion to, to have this appointing oh. Greg to two years and Richard to one. Second. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Can we oppose standing? No, you have it. Thanks. And Luke Krista, Krista. Jones is, uh, said she'd be willing to do the cleaning of the office and they get a job description. People can look it over and we're going to vote on it if $25 an hour starting on 7 1. We've got a list of duties. This is outside of her normal hours. And we will know that she's, she's just going to send us, she's just going to have this to her. Time sheet, time sheet. Well, it's a different wage. Up to. We used to do that with Julie Rowletter. She used to do land record research and lister work, and we'd have a one time sheet covering both rates. And my only question was in the overtime question. Uh, she's already doing 40 for Kim under that 
prior letter that she has. This is adding two to four hours a week of overtime at 25. But this is when that's different. It it's would be different. a different job description. Yeah, it's different because it's a totally different job, not Correct. under the town clerk. Correct. My question is just making sure of that. Because okay. We don't want to get, we don't want to go too far without. I don't think you can. She's under our employment. But it's part. two different letters of hire. I don't care. You are under the same employer working greater than 40 hours. You're going to have to go. Yeah, so I have a pending question with. Um, We're not going to give her 50 an hour Karen. for damn sure. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> we should just have a double piece of it. I think we do it too when we got, you know. Yeah. So she, yeah. if she was. <laughs> if she was she had a kid longer. or something and you could put it underneath? She. Identified herself as an independent contractor. <laughs> no, no, really. You should do that. But then you're not taking taxes out of it. It's not under check. That's right. You're paying her. That's right. And it'd be her responsibility to pay the taxes and whatever right. else out of it. Yeah. She'd have to get insurance, though, wouldn't she? Yeah. I think we have. We can set it up as independent contractor. Uh, the additional costs. Generally, we ask for some basic insurance for contractors. It can't be too far off of what Ro of what what Robert's doing. So we can set this, can this exactly about yeah. Robert's so, because we're not paying Robert time. We're not but doing Robert don't work forty hours a week. Anymore. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. She's a different class. So I do have a. So if the letter were to be approved at what we thought was okay, uh, Karen Stock Paul will have to tell us if it's a testimony massage one way or the other, so that we're not. Yeah. We're so not when when the. the um, School rates come in. Do you want to discuss it again there when you get a chance to talk to Karen? Yeah, we can. Well, if they come together, I think the school rates should come in early next week or like tomorrow. <laughs> right. And Karen should be getting back at the same time so we can defer both of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just to be, I, I really want to be careful about this. Yeah. yeah. It's a little odd with the clerk's uh, control over the 40. It's too different. By the letter of hire. I, I'm just, I know yeah. that was the question though. It's like, but you're are right. you sure this is okay? Because usually what Matt said is the basic rule. You know, I'm she's under the umbrella, confused. right? The, what Matt's saying is she's under the umbrella yeah. of the town of Pittsburgh. Yes. So I just, I wanted to go slow on that. Just to ask the question, and that's the yeah, only no, issue I right. can think of. Right. May not be able to do it. No. Well, okay. or it's thirty-two fifty instead of twenty-five. That's the because, old, yeah. the old thing, right? Yeah, or whatever the twelve. No, it'd be like thirty-seven. No, I really wouldn't do that. I don't know. Mm -mm. <laughs> just saying, it changes a lot. Yeah. When yeah. that, when that mm -mm. one point five bits, it changes nope. a lot. Wait, why could we? Could we do a stipend? Can we do a salary for the cleaning? No, because do a the stipend. Issue, the issue is still she's the, uh, unemployed. Yeah, but if it's, it's not an hourly thing, my wife talks about this all day long because <laughs> she's in the tax department. <laughs> yeah, and independent contractor tests are like huge. For oh, them. they're pain. I've oh, been yeah. through them with the Department and, of Labor, it's and awful. they get pulled into employee status almost all the time. Yeah. So can that office cleaner position be done by anybody without special skills? Yes. You know, do they have the insurance for commercial? No. Do they run a business? No. Then they have to be an employee. You know, it's kind of a quick little checkoff list. So that was my conversation, you know, the, the unanswered thing. If she's totally an employee and she's classified, then we have a rate. We have a high rate of pay that would have to happen. But it's a simple, I think it's a simple question, but it just needs to be answered. Yeah. And if it's answered, then we'll know. And Maybe you'll sign a letter with this modified, or maybe you won't, or maybe she'll work 38 hours for Kim and two hours for $25 an hour. That's another, Kim, you know, I'm not saying Kim will like that, but that's the only way to keep her below 40. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a way to give her more money, but exactly. keep her under 40. <laughs> I don't know. Things can be so complicated, you know. <laughs> is, there, is there anything else? So, executive session possibly for. Uh, Nothing new. Jim Mahoney was going to get back to Greg. I'm sorry, uh, David Rue, the town attorney. Do we need to go into executive session or no? No. Okay. No. No, I just tell you there was no new information. Oh, no new. Sorry. So Jim was okay. on vacation off yesterday. Didn't know if he was going to have time to catch up with Howard and get us something for tonight about uh, 
the terms of the purchase right. sale agreement, so we don't have anything to go in to talk about yet. Do you want to read the deed stuff? Uh, yeah, the packet. Like, yeah, it talks about like 1998 soil rights and stuff. I'm not sure how to read it. There was a projection, a projection on how much it was there. Or how much right. It was and it, it talked about the rights that it, there was a two year stuff. Most of that's all. You have to have a multi sector now for all that stuff to be up that. So. Is that everything? That motion to adjourn? My, my personal opinion is we could probably get a sand bit cheaper in this time. Just my personal opinion. You get upper money. Yeah. Well, you have another chance to discuss it. Yeah. And at some point, you can always make the decision to go public too. But with that kind of concern, yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus the deal, which should be executive. So yeah, you can you can, you don't have to put everything in executive. That doesn't. Some of that community discussion is what Susan was talking about during the original proposal, which was we're going to have community discussions on this, <laughs> but. Whether you do that before an after person sale agreement is the question. So I love the idea of being a recreation field, but I'm just saying. You're going to throw every roadblock at it possible. Yeah, I hear it already. Yeah, okay. I already know where his, his, his little path. <laughs> it's going to yeah, work. I'm just saying. Gee, it's not going to be good for this. It's not going to be good for this. No, I, it's going to be I mean, great for the ball field. Yes. Well, the ball field is there. I just want to say now when they do all the new boards to see how much time, because I mean, I'm at there, the original, it should be 90 years of, right. you know, gravel. <laughs> well, now that we, let's look at it and see it's how much we have building. left in ours. Right. Let's build a wreck building. I agree with that. In our court. When the boring is done, you should do it in the act. You can actually you see in the court. And, you know, you have to be exactly. away from the roads and all that other stuff. So. Anything else? Did you just report on something that you did with twelve thousand dollars? We have oh, yeah. we haven't done it, it yet. Oh, oh okay. You haven't spent it? No, but that's there was there were some heavy discussions in, in our it's got it's coming. Are uh, there mouths dropped that you got money? Yeah, and then we got revised quotes and everything came in at eighteen grand, so just Somebody was supposed to come tonight and they didn't. Erica, Erica's going to be talking with you about. We do have some account money that we're trying to figure out the Mac Pratt funds that uh, we've raised in the past, but that's been in a personal account for the last couple of years. So we're trying to get that person who holds that account to give us the money before we can spend it because with an $18,000 bill, where do we get that money? Whether we spend that account account and try to get the reimbursement. So we're trying to talk with Jennifer, trying to figure out how we end up getting that or whether we can talk to the company about putting six thousand dollars and then getting a check from the town for twelve thousand dollars. So in the back streams we've been talking about that. We're also waiting for one new quote to come in. So with everything going up it, it's I know. We're like literally it's got, like... got twelve thousand we thought we were golden and then called and said, hey we're ready to go and they're like, oh we went up it's our shipping. shipping. Uh, is that word yep. yep. Has a few well Jesus. but that's if you figure out what it is again I would instead of you know Torturing everybody, just come back and say the cost is this. Yeah, you know. Sometimes we end up torturing ourselves so much when money is actually sitting there, and right. ultimately still working on getting that other money freed up is is probably a good longer term project. But well, well, that's where Eric was talking about. Maybe we come back and ask the town or the select board to just if we could use five thousand out of our reserve funds yeah. for it. So she's. In the process of yeah, figuring it out. I that wanted to, I wanted it ordered by last week and that didn't happen. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we did have we did have a very successful uh, weekend of softball. We took on an additional state tournament this year, so that place is hosting five tournaments now this year. Or we used almost two, so we're bringing like. And if you went ahead and ordered it now, 
That would definitely, that would, would speed be, up the process. It would. Yeah, it would make people deal with the money fast. That's right. right? You know, I would think, <laughs> you, you got my style as well. <laughs> go ahead and order it. Well, folks, is here. Where's the money yeah. coming from? Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I just, because it's, it's evident to me that, and I'm sure the whole town is supportive of doing this. Right. So, and we know we're sitting on money, so, you know. Yeah, and we're bringing a lot of people to the community. Yeah, for like a yeah. Long time. yeah, yeah. With these over tournaments, four, there was over four hundred fifty people last weekend. Wow, so that's great. And that's great. Do they, they camp? They do everything. They're, they're not up there on property now. No, I didn't mean that. But they must like where no, did because yeah. they come from out of town, so they must stay. They, they, they stay at the hotel. Out, maybe Woods Camp got them one, and oh, the other okay. one was, was booked out a bunch of them. Yeah. Oh, but, nice. So that's good. Oh. Air, Airbnbs. Oh, sun, you know where sure. the sunset full. Yeah, you're just driving by, you're gonna full. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus, four. How many teams? Thanks for the update. You were keeping that from us. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> there, there were sixteen teams this weekend. There's twenty seven teams already for the choice. Oh my god! Okay, well, make sure you got the stuff by then. Yeah, that's yeah. what. That's what might yeah, has to happen. The, 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 the town That's awesome. The town fire department volunteer at the time came up and watered the field zone for us. That's what Ryan it was, said. It was a good community effort. It was good. Yeah, because it was so dusty. It was so dusty. Yeah, so dusty. That's awesome. That's great. Can we adjourn? Sure. Yeah, okay. I'm over to adjourn. Brian, next time you got to come up and get yourself a cheeseburger. I'm just saying we cook the best cheeseburgers, all right? Oh, yeah? Who's cooking? It's not Uncle Gary and Kennedy.